G'day guys, Steve Morgan here from uh, Fishing Monthly Magazines and I've got Jamie McEwen with me today, a Queensland gun broom angler. Um, we thought since the, uh, the Hobie Worlds are coming to our backyard, the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia, I thought it was time that uh, Jamie and I gave you a lesson on how to catch Australian yellowfin brim because the chances are you don't have yellowfin brim in your part of the world. Um, Jamie has won the last couple of events that have been fished at this time of the year in winter time on the Gold Coast for brim, yep. and I'm the current, uh, the 2018 uh, Costa Brim Series Angler of the Year. So between us, we've got a fair bit of runs on the ball when it comes to brim, and we want to make sure that you catch plenty of yellowfin brim when you're on the Gold Coast. Yep. And uh, Jamie, winter time on the Gold Coast, it's a pretty cool time for brim, isn't it? Mate, it's my favourite time to fish for brim anywhere in Australia, but the Gold Coast is, is a great time at winter time to fish for brim. Let's talk about brim a little bit. Uh, there's gonna, we'll put a few pictures of them up on screen here. They're not a big fish, are they? They're, no. a, they're a small fish. If you catch a brim which is four pound, you're yep. a dead set genius over yep. here. Our record uh, for ABT events is 1.99 kilos, yep. touch over four pound. Yep. On the Gold Coast, any fish over about 600 grams, I yeah. think. 600 grams to a kilogram is a real kicker fish. Yep. Um, and, but at that time of year, what happens is those fish all come from their summertime haunts, they're all spread through all of the estuaries, they all come down to the Gold Coast, to yep. the Broadwater, to within a few kilometres of the site, yep. and they're getting ready to spawn, That's and right, some of them yeah. have already spawned, and yep. they're sort of you know, staging for that spawning event. Yep. How does it all work? I, mean, I find that they're, that time of year they're hungry, um, they are usually in really good condition, um, and they come down from the canals, they come down, they sit in the deep water, the channels, and they, they spawn, or they're getting ready to spawn, and it's just, it's a lot easier to catch them when they're spawned up and schooled up and spawning like that. Now, if you were an event organiser like Hobie was, where yep. would you put the start? Like, is it dead right set in, in the middle? in the middle of the broad water, yeah. It's perfect. Yep. They've done a really good job by the, by the angler that's perfect. So the is. timing is good, yep. and the fact <coughs> is that, that you might only can paddle a couple of kilometres, that's yep. going to be enough to get into the, some of the fish, isn't it? Oh, you don't, you wouldn't even have, you could paddle a couple of hundred metres and get your bag and fish there for two days. Let's talk about some of your history on the Gold Coast. When you won the kayak event, you won the last kayak event at that yep. time of year on the Gold Coast. How yep. far was it from the start? Not far, which is good because I'm not the most athletic sort of guy. So it was, uh, it was easy paddling down to the, um, down to the bridge. About a kilometre, yep. kilometre and a half, something yep. like that. Yep. So spent two days fishing there, paddled back nice and relaxed sort of thing. And yeah, yep. it was good. And so what Jamie's talking about is the Sundale Bridge. We'll show it to you in a cutaway here. Plenty of bridge pylons, plenty of yep. current, plenty of schooling brim around it. But that's not the only place you catch brim in wintertime. Let's go back to your ABT event out of the boat. Yep. How far did you travel from the start to win that event? Uh, not far at all. Um, from if, if it was from the start of the uh, where the Hobie Worlds are going to be, it's literally a couple of hundred metres. Yeah. And it's just all bits of structure in the main broadwater, so pontoons, pylons, swimming net enclosures, just little bits and pieces. Every couple of hundred metres, there'll be something. You just throw a lure at it. Now, the other good thing about uh, the winter on the Gold Coast is if you find these schooled fish, then yep. you can find them on your Lorant Sounders that yes. are going to be on those Hobie Outbacks. Um, they replenish, don't they? Yes. So if you find a spot where they are and catch them one day, you can catch them there the next day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's that time of year, it's one of those places where you can pretty much go hard on a spot all day and go back there the next day and know that you will get your bag. Cool. Well, let's talk about tackle yep. because this may not be the tackle that you use where you're fishing in your part of the world. Grab a rod up, reel up here. It's really all about spin rods, yep. thread lines, and uh, and light tackle. So run us through your outfit here. It's only very light. It's a fast action rod, about seven foot. The reel's two thousand size reel, eight pound braid, and eight pound leader. That would be my heaviest outfit that I use for brim. That, and this would be the one that you'd use around those bridge pylons yeah, to bridge pull them pylons, out. bridge pylons, rock walls. All I, I fish a lot lighter. I, I fish same sort of reels and rods, but yep. I fish down to two pound um, straight through fluorocarbon. Yep. You can use straight through fluorocarbon, you can use braid and leader, yep. but don't go too heavy. If you're using 15, 20 pound, that yep. might be great for where you're fishing, but on the Gold Coast, they, one, they're going to be line shy. Yep. Two, these little lures that you're going to have to cast to catch brim, you're not going to be able to throw them properly, are you? Yeah, you just got to be careful. There's a fine line between getting the big ones in and losing them but sometimes if you go too heavy a line you won't get the bite anyway. That's right. So you just got to back your angling ability and, and try and uh, get it in. Yeah it's better to have hooked them and lost them yep. than to have not hooked Rather them in the first place. All, yeah. So light spin tackled you know three or four of these little outfits 1,000 to 2,000 size reels six and a half to eight foot long rods yep. make the two piece of fine um, and that light line. Stra I love straight through fluorocarbon. Jamie loves his braid and leader. Both work pretty well. Yep. So there you go. There's some tackle for the Gold Coast. Looking at the shape of a brim, though, um, they don't have real big mouths. So the biggest brim you're going to catch is going to have a mouth maybe 
that big. You know, most bream are going to have a mouth yeah. this big. So yeah. when you talk lure sizes, we're talking small baits and small plastics. So yeah. things that are, you know, 30 to 50 mil long yeah. are right in the hitting zone for these for these fish. Yeah. I thought what we're going to do is let's first go through five key lures for the Gold Coast. Yeah. And then secondly, we'll look at some spots and some um, techniques that you might be able to use at the Hobie World. So yeah. let's start with your number one. Yep. The cranker crab. Cranker Give us a crab. cranker crab and, and tell us about the cranker crab and why they're such a good lure. Um, the cranker crabs, I believe it's the, the action of the claw is, is what sets them apart from everything else. Um, as you see, the, the claw's got the, the hook built in and that's a, a floating claw. So that's they, right. Their action is exactly like what you would see a crab doing on the bottom or on a bridge pylon or a pontoon. Yep. They sit on the side. The the claw floats around. And that's the first thing the brim will peck, isn't <coughs> defensive it? Defensive action, and the brim looks at that and goes, I've got to have a, a bit of a taste on that. Yep, and and the cranker crab is a very snag resistant lure because those claws float away from yeah. the structure. Yeah. And you don't have to give them a lot of action. Do you? you throw them out, yeah. you keep you keep pace with the lure and you feel where it is, yeah. and the bites are just, you'll feel the bite. I think it's, I th with the crank crab, the way I fish it, I think it's more of exactly where you're casting it rather than the action of what you're doing to it. Because yep. I fish a lot of bridge pylons or pontoon um, pylons, and you really, if you imagine where a fish is going to be feeding, it's not going to be feeding two metres back from the pylon, or it may sometimes, but the, the majority yeah. of the fish are going to be it, on the post, picking it off. eating the oysters and whatever is on the oyster, and they just they just see this crab come down past them and they go, oh, he must have fallen off the, the pylon and we're, we're going to eat him. Now, I've got one of your secret weapons here. This is one where you've put a lot of weight on it. This isn't, yep. you can't get this off the Cranker website, but you can get the Crankers internationally off the Cranker website. Australian designed and sold. What's going on? You've got a house brick tied to the bottom of this so one. So that's, um, obviously, with it's going to be very tidal on the Gold Coast. So if, you, if you're not accustomed to strong tides, I suggest you, you sort of try and do some research. Um, but with the, the bridge pylons especially and, and anywhere else in the broad water, there'll be times in the current where in the during the day in the tide that it's very hard to fish and it's hard to keep that lure in the in the ideal area where you're gonna get all the bites. So a um, lot of mucking around and what was the best system for me. I came up with this one. It's just a, a bit of lead from a tire shop actually that's just glued on the bottom. And what it does is it just keeps that lure down in the strike zone, like yep. straight down in the pylon rather than... Rather than the line <coughs> pulling it away. Yeah, dragging yep. it away. So yep. it gives you that extra time of, of being able to fish. Yep. So number one lure for the Gold Coast that you need to have for winter time is going to be that cranker crab. 100%. This is the other lure that you, when you won the boating event, you caught a lot of fish on it. This yep. is a, this is a, a company called Ikea Gear, Japanese company. Um, they're great at making baits, powder baits, stuff like this. This is called Eco Gear Aqua. It's a bio bait. It is very similar to like the Berkeley Gulp. If you're familiar with Gulp, it's like that. It smells a bit different from yep. Gulp. This sort of smells a bit like I like soy sauce. It sort of smells like to me. Mixed with Vegemite or something. That's it. So, <laughs> and, and it's called a brim prawn, this one. So this is the bait. It looks just like it's got the little shrimp feelers. And we fish them on these worm hooks. Yep. So when they sink, they, they sink vertically like this. They get a little bit of a shimmer and they sink down. You know, some people call it the Gold Coast chip. Yep. You know, it looks like a prawn, looks like a bit of a bread or chip that people are throwing in. But if you can see fish on pontoons, this is yeah. a really good way to target them, isn't it? it? It is because it's for two reasons. The way it lands on the water, it's not a, a big plop and it doesn't spook the fish that are, that are around the canals because the, the fish are spooky that are yep. here on the Gold Coast. So that's the number one reason. And the second reason is once it lands and it's just sits in that zone and it just wafts down and the brim can actually look at it and think, I'm going to have to inquire yeah, on that. That's right. And when they come and then they smell that, mm, that's, that's been designed by the cleverest yeah. Japanese scientists on the planet, yeah, you know, yeah. for the brim to eat it. So they come and sniff it and they, they sort of can't help yeah. it, but eat it. So this aqua, um, you can fish it in that broad water. I like fishing them up the canals as well. And there's some cutaway footage here you can see of, of you can throw them into the pontoon, yep. sink them slowly down. When you watch the fish eat it, Big strike, yeah. and, and it, to me it's a really visual and exciting sort yeah. of fishing. And this is a great way to cover that top half of the water yeah. column yeah. where the fish are, are sitting up and they're sitting up and feeding. Yeah, I'd, I'd use that um, in, still, in the broad water. I'd still use that on the pontoons um, that are on the edges and even around weedy edges or really clear um, banks. Yep. Just throw it in. And sometimes you just slowly wind it back and they'll, they'll yeah, yeah. it. Or... That's right. You can skip this actually across the top of the water to attract the fish and then let it sink. Yep. You'll see them come over yep. and away they go to eat it. So Eco Gear Aqua, we like that colour. That's called salt and pepper. Yep. Um, but any of the colours really work. I like that because I can actually see it yep. in the water. This is rigged on a number one um, Van Fook Magic Beak worm hook. 
um, that number one size worm hook seem, tends to yeah. fit this plastic. So there you go, there's number two. Number three I've got in here is, uh, is a crankbait. So we've all caught fish on crankbaits uh, through our careers. Largemouth bass love them, a lot of fish love them. Brim crankbaits are small. This one here, 38 millimetres long. Yep. If you're over 50 mil, you're too big for yeah. a brim, basically. Um, so small crankbaits. This one here is a deep diving bib, which will get down to sort of three or four feet. Um, the technique for yellowfin brim, it's not twitching and jerking a crankbait. It's a slow wind Constant where you just wind, wind it straight yeah. on. And when you feel them biting, just let them keep biting and biting until, yep. they, until they wind on. The best tip I have for crankbaits is, one, shallow water, yep. so that this is actually bumping on the bottom, yep. but two, a bit of wind really yeah, makes yeah. it better, doesn't yep. it? Like, if you've got clear water, you can see the fish, all of a sudden, a bit of wind, they'll make those fish yeah, bite, won't yeah. it? Yeah, you can go to a spot where it's glassy and you think there's no fish there, and ten minutes later, there's ten knots of wind on, you go back there again, and there's fish all over it. Yep. So, uh, again, there's a little link up here with a link to uh, so a, a more complicated video on this atomic bait. Yep. This is an atomic uh, deep hards crank, 38 mil long. Uh, clip the link if you want to read more about it. I like fishing this on sort of two, three, four pounds straight through fluorocarbon. Yep. Keep the line light, and you're going to get plenty of bites on that fella. Um, so all around these shallow areas, the broad water. If you find some of these fish that are up shallow and feeding, yep. that's how you get them. Now a lot of you were saying though at that time of year, a lot of fish are going to be schooled and in deeper water. By yep. deeper water, you mean 10 to 20 foot yeah. of water. Yeah. Um, good way to catch them. Again, we've all fished it. Is a uh, is a small little single tail grub. Yeah, you know, these ones here. This is a Z-Man. Uh, the Z-Man grubs, two and a half inch long. Some popular colours in Australia are the yep. bloodworm, the gudgeon, and the motor oil. Yep. Um, but a little jig head anywhere between, say, you know, an eighth and a twenty yep. fourth yep. ounce, and you can really cover that whole water column. You can get it right down to the bottom, twitch it up off the bottom, or you can you know, even slow roll these yeah, things. Yeah, you just got to be prepared to change your jig heads up with the tide um, just to keep it in the in the strike zone again. And again, if you find some fish sitting on the sounder, throw out over the top of them, let it sink all the way to the bottom, and it's not massive rips, is it? No. It's, all, it's just little, little yeah. pops up off the bottom, yeah. and then that, that, that tail wobble back down. Of course, the Z-Man, when it sits on the bottom, that tail sits there and flutters in the yeah. current, the brim just, yeah. they come and they pluck yeah, it up. It's very much a finesse thing, brim fishing. Like There's, there's no need for huge actions or big um, whipping rods off the off the bottom and stuff sort of thing. You just, it's s bit subtle, of slow, that yep. sort of thing. And if you want to put a little bit of scent on this, that's all also yeah. works a lot as well. Yep. You know, some of the uh, Z-Man scents or the, the squidgy S-Factor, yep. any, any scent really. Yep. Yeah, the mega strike scent yep. that they do. Any of those scents is better than no scent yeah, a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah, I think scent is, is a, probably a key in the in the broad water at, at winter time sometimes as well. Um, a lot of people like fishing these on a braid leader combo. Yeah. So, you know, like six pound braid and say a four pound leader, yeah. pretty popular for these. You can feel the bites yeah. good. And then when the fish gets on, you can sort of set yeah, that hook. A, winter time is known for, you'll catch a lot of fish, you'll get a lot of bites, but it can be um, a finicky bite. So they can yeah. just like nibble and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, so you want to be able to feel the, feel the bites and, and fish as light as you possibly yeah. can. And if you're not getting bites or you're not converting bites, best thing is to go lighter, isn't yes. it? If you're fishing yeah. six pound leader, go to four pound. If you're yeah. fishing four pound, go to two pound. Always yeah. better to hook the, the fish yeah. than to, to not have a bite at all yeah. in the first place, <laughs> even though you may lose that fish. And I mean, out in the broad water, there's not too much that they can actually get in back into the structure around yep. the bridge pylons and stuff or around the seaway walls yeah you'll you'll have the fish a little bit heavier but if you're just fishing the the channels and the channel markers it's pretty easy going you can fish two pound now that brings us to our next bait channel markers the navigation the reds and greens that sit on the side combined with one of these little metal bladed bait that's an eco gear vx blade yep. in the 30 or the 35 size you want um, especially in that color in the black that's a real killer for the gold coast brim so Run us through how you'd fish that bait on some of the navigation markers. Yeah, okay, so we have the navigation markers and the depth varies, but it's, you know, around that 10 to 15 foot sort of sort of area. Um, and the fish will, will school up on the markers and they either school up to spawn there or they school up to have a break from going out to sea and coming back yep. in sort of thing. Just so, a staging area, yeah. out of the current a bit. Yep. It's on the edge of the channel, it's yep. behind something. It's nice clean water. Yep. So I would fish, I would put the, the blade either right beside the... The channel marker or just past it yep and then just let it sink to the bottom and just a slow hop off the bottom that's right so the cool thing about these blades is when they're on sand they don't actually just hit the sand and fall and lay on the sand they yep. actually sort of they hit the bottom with such speed that they bang they sort of sit in the in the sand like this and then that that ex that little bit of tail sitting out looks like yep. it looks like something's just got its head in the yeah. sand doesn't it so a common retrievable you'll you'll lift that blade up 
it'll hit the bottom, sit in the sand. While you haven't got any slack on the line, the brim will pluck it. They'll get stuck in those sticky hooks. So the next time you lift it, oh, there's one already on. Yeah. It's like that fish ate it off the bottom, and yeah. it's a bit of metal, but it's like that's why they eat it because it looks like something which has got its head buried down yeah. in there. Yeah, although they're a spooky fish, they're a very inquisitive fish. So yeah, if they see something that's unusual, looks yep. like something that they should be eating, they'll have a yeah. look at it as long as it's presented properly. That's right, and this is very unintimidating. They see a puff of dust on the bottom, there's a little treble hanging out there, they'll just go and, yep. you know, they ain't got hands, no, that's you're going right. to pluck it and yep. see what's going on. So there you go, that's the little Eco Gear VX blade. So there's the, the crabs, the aquas, the crankbaits, the plastics and the blades. Yep. There's a shopping list of five baits that are going to get you in good set on the Gold Coast. And I know if I gave you that kit, you'd probably only use two of them. Yep, I'd go the crank crab and the... <laughs> the crab and the aqua Eco. would get you out, and that's won you a lot of money over the years. Yep. Now, let's talk some of the, the spots. We've already said that Hobie have done the right thing by putting the event right in the middle of where the fish are. Yep. Um, on the cutaway now, I'm just going to put a, a map showing you that, say, five-kilometre radius yep. from the start, and you reckon there's no worries. You can win that tournament. Yep. No problems within five k's of the yeah, start. Def definitely. There's probably a dozen awesome spots within you know easy paddling distance from yep. the start and then and just off the top of my head that's you know the sundale bridge of course is yep. where you've won a lot of money in the past um the trawlers yeah where they sit there with yep. the, the prawn trawlers unload yep. you've got all the navigation beacons yep. all yep. the way up the channel you've got the famous one of the uh the swimming pool yep the pool marsh on the outside yep. and, the, and what a great bait this eco gear acker is it doesn't even snag up in the in yep. the pool mesh yeah, that's that's perfect but the there. fish and the bait yep. fish all hang around it yeah that's only a few hundred meters from the start yeah it's only a few hundred meters it's and that that area is a perfect area for brim like they just sit in around that net there's so much bait there and that time of year is just prime time for, for them to be schooled. Now schooling fish any of these channels that run around wave break island and some of that coffee rock on the bottom can hold them as well yeah. so all of that stuff is within 5Ks of the yep. start. And even you and I, we are not gun kayakers, but we can paddle 5Ks. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. that hard. I mean, it's all, all you need to do is get in the kayak, turn your sounder on, and paddle in the channels, and you'll see the coffee rock reef, you'll see the fish schooled up, just throw something at them and you'll, you'll start catching. There you go. So uh, we really look forward to welcoming all of the international anglers across to Australia for the Hobie Worlds. These guys put on a kick-ass show. Yeah, yeah, um, we'll be down there be doing great. some coverage for it. Yep. We're not fishing it. You don't have to catch them against us. No, you're Jamie. Uh, you only have to beat your fellow competitors in that event. So welcome to Australia. We hope you've got some, uh, some insight into catching the yellowfin brim here in Australia. And we'll see you at the Hobie Worlds.